Okay, once we got this screwed, now we can go ahead and start assembling it on the table, but what's going to happen is if we're not totally lined up, then it's going to make this other fitting, this other number three, not line up. So we're best off making sure this one is still in place where it needs to go, C-clamping it, getting our top screw in, then we can take it out and finish screwing it on the table. Now, when this goes in, it's going to pull everything together. So if you try, if you start from up high and slide it down, it'll be easier. Although it's going to be more prone to cut you. Now, with that, with that in, lined up, we're finally good to go ahead and screw that off. As a final measurement, let's still make sure that we're 21 and a quarter, or 20 and a quarter inches. We happen to be 20 and a quarter inches from there to there, which is what we need for this particular end cap. Now that we've got the front taken care of, I'm going to go ahead and screw, screw it together. Now one of the things you'll notice is that the combustion chamber top is actually higher than the rail itself. We got two choices. We could try cutting a square hole in here and then seeing if the square hole is going to line up to here or we can take measurements off of here and transcribe it on here and then cut the square hole. That's going to be a little more accurate. We're going to, it's going to be a safer bet. And so what we'll need to do is we'll need to stop this basically from bending in. To do that I'm just going to bend up an angle piece of 24 gauge, it doesn't matter if it's 24 or 26 as long as it squares this up. I'll clamp it on, then I'll take measurements from here to this point, to here to this point, do the same on this side from here to this point, here to this point, and then I'll mark it onto the cap and then I'll mark it so it's an inch smaller then and we'll go from there. Okay, and as you can see, mine wasn't totally square. It's no big deal though, as long as our openings are going to line up. Now what we want to do is we want to cut this out. There we go. Cut this out on the inside, then we'll use tongs. We'll notch it right here in each of the corners. And then we'll bend this one inch flange to the inside which would be up this direction. Now for simple reference purposes also, I'm going to put an X right here indicating that this is going to line up with right here on the number two. 
this would be number four up here. That way, since I've got precision measurements, it's not going to get twisted around. To cut the hole, everybody has their own preference for starting the hole. My personal preference is just to use a good old-fashioned screwdriver and hammer. My personal preference is to use an offset snip. This particular is a pair of Midwest snips. It happens to be my favorite as far as offsets. Notch the corners. And bend it up. Well, excuse me, in this case it's bend it down. If you bend a little over 90, it'll make it easier in fitting it on as you go. if everything fits. Number two. So it goes this way. It's like it's just a little bit tight. That's all we have to do. it by beating on the corner a little bit. Use this as a corner where things will get really tight, where it's not bent the best. Now you'll notice that on this side, how it's not really lining up too well. You can't get the end cap down. You take a screwdriver, pry it over. Or you can take the hammer and hit the cap itself. There. Right here. We're actually going to do the same thing again. We'll make a cap, except for, for we'll have a one inch that'll go in on each of these sides. Then we'll have one inch that goes in right here, and that way the finished cap will have a nice little appearance. To hold it in place, we'll just simply put some silicone in it.